back with Dr. Tara Dahl for our regular Tuesday chat about the wonderful testing that they offer at Health Diagnostic Laboratory. And um, I feel like we should just call this fireside chat, even though we don't have a fire going. <laughs> but, uh, but we're going to chat, and you're going to share with me a story of one of your patients. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you a story about a patient. I want to do this because I really want to slow down what this whole process is all about, having a heart attack, what does it feel like, what do you experience? Because I think we've become very desensitized to this, mm -hmm. thinking, you know, I don't really need to worry about this too much because if I have a heart attack, I just go to the emergency room, they give me a stent, and yeah. I get fixed just like my neighbors down the street. No big deal. And we've just become desensitized. Doctors have too. So I'm just going to tell you the real story about, about a patient. He actually was a, a naval veteran, so, you know, one of, our, one of our stars who served, you know, for this country is now retired, but, but young, in his early 60s. No history of anything. Um, had always had normal screening, going through the Army, never had any, any, any issues at all. He was actually in the Navy. Um, never had any risk factors for heart disease. And one night, very unexpectedly, he develops this severe chest pain. I mean, chest pain that was so severe, it took his breath away. Took his breath away to the point that he could barely speak. And, and he's so how old then? He's early 60s. Okay. So he calls out to his wife, um, you know, trying to say, help me, help me. And she comes in the room. And his wife, very unfortunately, suffered from premature Alzheimer's disease. Mm. She sat there in the corner of the room with a phone in her hand, not understanding how to dial 911. So bottom line is there is delay. This man's experiencing chest pain continuously. Eventually, hours go by. He eventually was able to activate the EMS system. So what happens? They show up. You know, they give him medication, he feels better, they whisk him off to the hospital, and waiting at the door of the hospital is the, the ER staff and the nurses and the doctors, and everyone's great and kind and pleasant and saying, hey, listen, we're going to do a catheterization. We've done six this morning. It's no big deal routine procedure. So he goes into the catheterization lab. He feels better now. He's awake during the procedure, and he's talking to the cardiologist, and they're almost joking, and um, he, he just feels much better at this point. And then all of a sudden, he stops responding. And the cardiologist looks up at the screen, and he sees that a hole had burst through this man's ventricle, which was so severely damaged in those hours, that blood was pouring to his chest. So what happens is the team starts doing CPR. And very fortunately, there was a cardiothoracic surgeon two floors up. And so they whisked him into the elevator, and within 10 minutes, his ribs were cracked open, and his heart began to be repaired. They repaired the hole, they bypassed two vessels, and he basically had a perfectly fixed heart. And the cardiothoracic surgeon left the room and basically talking to another doc said, you know what, this is why I'm in medicine. We saved a life today. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what it's all about. So later that evening, the family comes to see their loved one and the nurses say, you know what, he's going to be waking up soon. And they go over and they're holding his hand and they're sitting there. And hours go by and uh, one of the, uh, the son-in-law happens to be a physician and he noticed something. He noticed that this man's uh, uh, eyes were slightly open and his pupils were fixed and dilated. Now what that means is this man was brain dead. So in the 10 minutes it took to get from the cath lab to the OR, he didn't get enough oxygen to his brain and he had irreversible brain damage. So now we have a man who's in a persistent vegetative state with a perfect heart, not in a heart-lung machine, staying alive only by nutrition that we have to give him through an IV. And they didn't notice that before they took him in for, for his surgery? They didn't know because he, was, he didn't have it before the surgery. This, this happens very quickly. Oh. So now, he's on, now the family has to decide whether to withdraw nutrition or let him be in a vegetative state for 20 years. And you can imagine this is the kind of stuff that is heart-wrenching for families. Um, what they ultimately did was withdrew nutrition, and within three weeks he passed. And I tell you the story because there's a lot of things along the way that can go wrong. And if we don't think about prevention early, you know, we, we can't address this, and sometimes it's too late. I tell you this story because actually this story happened when I was a teenager. And I never had a chance to say goodbye because this is a story of my grandfather. Aww. And I tell you, I am so determined to make a difference and to change the way medicine's practiced because this kind of disease is preventable, and families should need to go through that. And I think we need to really understand how serious this is and how we need to get serious now. Well, and the work that you do is just so amazing. And, uh, and the fact that you have more and more doctors finding out about the testing that you do and recommending that to their patients. Yeah. Because I think that all physicians understand that prevention is key. I think there's just, there's a disconnect between how do we, we know that's the fact, but then how do we make that paramount? How do we, how do we 
fix that first before everything else. Right. Keep people from getting sick before right. we Not have to do waiting surgery. Until you get, yeah. I mean, we pay for catheterization. We spend de you know, tens of thousands of dollars to try to fix it at that point when it doesn't make any sense. I mean, had we get to the patient 10 to 20 years earlier with a you know, a couple hundred bucks on a blood test could yeah. have changed someone's life forever. That's what I was going to say. What was key about your story was the fact that he was healthy. Like he was, nothing showed on any of the screens, right. perfectly fit and healthy, not overweight, I'm assuming, no. just, and, um, and it sneaks up on you just like that. So right. the testing is so very important. Thanks for sharing that story. I knew it was going to make me teary-eyed <laughs> right before we started telling it. Uh, you can talk to your doctor if you're interested in getting the HDL test. We will have Dr. Dahl and her colleagues back with us every Tuesday to learn more about their testing and how it is so important to you and your family. Uh, you can get more information about the Health Diagnostic Laboratory by going to their website, hdlabinc.com. You can also give them a call at the numbers there on your screen. And we are back with more broadcast right after this. A portion of today's show is brought to you by Health Diagnostic Laboratory, Inc.